so I guess it's not that weird. So let's uh, do this to the top right hand side, our Blue Zerg player from Team Expert. This is Bly. And to the bottom left hand side, it is going to be the Red Zerg player, Necho. So what is it by Red Bull? Don't know what a co-op commander is. Well, there's a mode in StarCraft 2 called co-op. And uh, co-op commanders are basically, when you play co-op, you basically choose a co-op commander to play with. And uh, some of them are free to play and some of them are small in-game purchases uh, that you can pay to play after past level 5. You can actually play any commander up to level 5, but to go past level 5 you have to pay for some of them. So it's just one of those, just so you have some extra co-op content, which is always fun. I actually wanted to play some co-op at some point. I feel like I might do a co-op stream at some point. Maybe even play some co-op tonight after we've done some more casting. Uh, if you guys would be interested in that, I don't know. But um, maybe a few people would be... I really want to get into co-op because a lot of people play co-op. And I think I would enjoy it too if I actually started to get into it. It's just I don't actually get into it at all. So maybe maybe I should try. But Infamous DMZ, if you haven't tried co-op and you know, you're looking for a way to play StarCraft that's a little bit less stressful than the ladder, it's a really fun mode. So if you haven't tried it, I'd really advise you go on it. Like I say, you can play any commander up to level 5. You can play a lot of the commanders past level 5 for free anyways. It's a really fun mode, and you, you know, there's diff different difficulty levels. It's a really fun way to get involved and play some StarCraft 2 without hitting up the ladder and all of that stuff. I miss Duddles. Yeah, Duddles, uh, Duddles has a baby now. Duddles has baby. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how a man who doesn't even exist has a baby, but he does. Poor Duddles. Anyways, we should talk a bit about this game because this is actually already kind of an interesting choice of opening. Obviously, from Nurcio, opening with the uh, <coughs> hatchery first on the gold base, so he's setting that up right away. And obviously, Bly opened hatchery first as well, but he took the normal base. So Nurcio taking a little bit of a risk early on, and we'll see if that pays off for him. I mean, the risk is that it's a lot more difficult to defend this gold base than it is to defend your usual natural expansion over here. So, uh, yeah, excited to see what happens as we see a uh, drone from Nurture moving. Ah, it is just going to the gold base. I've just been talking about this gold base. I'm like, huh, where's that drone going? I'm, uh, I'm a little bit silly. I'm a little bit silly. Infamous DMC says, I've honestly never played SC2, just finished Aldrin Parts for PC build, so that will change in a week or so. That's so awesome that you watch StarCraft, then, if you've never really played it. It's, uh, it's a great game to get into, man. Great game to get into. It's a very fun game to watch as well, honestly. It always amazes me that people can watch StarCraft 2 without having played it at least a little bit. I feel like it's so difficult to start watching and to fully start understanding without at least delving in and trying out some of the units yourself, you know? It's, uh, it's kind of crazy. Anyways, a couple of queens here just going to be uh, poking away at that Zergling. We see a fast left from Bly. A Rotron and an Evo Chamber at the front just makes it look as though it's the very generic, oh, I skipped Ling Speed, I'm going to play Roaches sort of thing. But with Bly, I'm never sure if he's actually just going to start up a Nidus Network and just attack. Um, as I'm sure Nurture maybe doesn't know either. Nurture, because he does have Ling Speed here, he will take the faster third hatch. And he needs to get Ling Speed because he needs to be able to move around and mobilely uh, have the mobility to defend the gold base. He starts up his own plus one very quickly after scout, and he starts up his own Roach Roran. Venitus Network on the way from Bly, though. He is going to get aggressive here. So he is going to set up. He is going to get aggressive. And let's see what will happen in the next couple of moments. Seen a fair amount, always found the strategy interesting, but never had a computer capable of playing. I mean, I mean, right, like, I mean, if you watch enough of it, you'll start to pick up on what's going on. I just, it's like when I watch, I, I, I guess, I guess it's, mm, I guess it's, I, I just can't imagine, like, watching a game like StarCraft. Like, for example, when I try and watch Dota, I have no clue what's going on, because I haven't even played a few games of Dota. But I can watch League of Legends, because I've roughly watched some League of Legends, and so I have a bit of a better idea of what's going on. Right? On, like, a few of the characters. Right. Anyways, let's talk about this Nidus, because this is going to get exciting. Sorry to have this game disrupt our little discussion in the chat. As we are going to be seeing these roaches and queens popping out. So Nurch is going to lose the Roach Roar, and He immediately just gives up the go uh, the main base, probably because he knows the gold is something he can rely on. But Bly, oh, what a play. That's really quite cute. You know, moving the Roach to the side so he can drop himself the uh, Nidus Network down to the low ground. That's kind of cool. So now you can actually hop to the low ground and get the gold base, but he didn't actually finish the main base. Now Nurture can actually get rid of this now just on the high ground. So I think Nurture just gives up the gold base because he still has the main alive. It should be kind of okay for him. 
Nurture's rallying a couple of units over here. Bly will commit onto the gold. Seven workers killed so far. Nurture's about a half plus one, and that will be an advantage he has in the Roach fights here. As we are going to be seeing the uh, Nidus getting picked away at, as we are going to see a new Nidus up on this side. It actually gets killed off, so only half the units got out. So now Nurture can kind of fight this kind of half of the army at a time, but does he have his own army in position? These Roaches being out of location really kind of hurts him. I love the mobility of Bly and how he's using this Nidus to jump into different positions. But obviously now he's kind of running out of options as to where he can pop units out. He gets another Nidus up over here. Uh, he gets quite a lot out before it gets targeted down. We're going to be seeing these Roaches and Nurture continue to fight. The plus one missile attack upgrade goes a long way to help him out with this. As we're going to be seeing those Roaches of Bly continue to just hunt down whatever he can. Try and chase the Ravager, the most expensive unit here that he could probably kill. The Ravager is running for its life. Run, boy, run! He's going to get away! The Ravager that lived... Wow. Oh, no. He runs to a new Nidus Network. He's somehow still alive. This Ravager is having the day of his life. How did he survive so long? This Ravager, I cannot believe it. As obviously Bly is starting to run out of units here. He continued with this attack, and in the end, Nurcho cleans this up. And that is going to be a nice little cleanup as we're going to be seeing those drones of Nurcho going to move on out over towards the third base. Which, uh, as a gold, actually never went down either. Crazy, crazy stuff. What's up, Indy? And hello, everyone from Indy's stream. Hitting us up with a host. Indy, a fun Polish streamer. Does some cast and plays at a very high level himself. And uh, was the observer at I am Katowice most recently as well. So go check out Indy's channel if you guys haven't already. And uh, thank Indy for the host. I've seen uh, people have been passing around hosts all over the place today. I've seen a little bit of a Twitter thing where uh, people were like, I think it was TLO, was like, I'm done streaming, but I passed the host to Mana. And then Mana was like, I passed the host to Indy. And it's like... The host uh, love is continuing at the moment to see all that crows about. So well timed. This one Ravager that still is alive. Absolutely crazy. And just the fact he didn't uh, kill uh, any of these. Oh, the Ravager went down. The fact he didn't kill any of the bases, obviously, and really didn't put Nurture that far behind in the end is really hurting him here because Nurture still has plus one, so he has that advantage. Nurture has the gold base advantage now as well, so even if he's a couple workers behind, Bly is 100% in the worst position. He has to make something happen now, and so far. He's just not quite been able to find a uh, way to make this happen. As you all see, this knight is going to get shut down here. And, well, again, I mean, Bly going to keep on trying to find ways to get damage done, but he's just not actually found himself the opportunity quite yet to really do anything more. And I think the opportunity, the timing, really has passed. So a little bit of a, uh, a, little bit of a rough one as we're going to be seeing Roach Speed coming on up on the other side on a couple of different sides. You can see the Nidus network on the way up here. As we get set to go. And again, just a few links coming in. Just going to be ready to surround this. Shut it down if he wants to. I mean, the roaches are here as well. Plus two roach speed on the way as well. So, I mean, just extra little bits and pieces for Nurture that are going to allow for him to really be able to, uh, you know, just continue to build on the lead he already has. He just quickly checked here for the third base on the right-hand side. Doesn't find it, so the links will just pull back home. And I guess Nurture will at the very least wait until roach speed before moving across the map. Um... At most, you know, if he waits long, longer than that, then maybe plus two. But the fact he already has a plus one missile upgrade advantage means that Roach Speed should be enough for him to justify moving across. Never knight is on the far right, so this maybe flies like last ditch effort to just get a set of units out and push in to try and end this game now. With the fact that he's only been building Roaches, you know, maybe he did enough eco damage to somehow make this work out. And we've seen this, uh... Another nice to the top side at the same time here, going to be popping in a moment or two as we see these Roaches of Lie coming on over. And they are going to be uh, pushing in. Queen takes a shot or two. Again, the nice at the top doesn't seem to be doing much, and Nurture's just like, yep, okay, let's go then. He's just going to jump right on top of this, and those Roaches are going to start going down very, very quickly. Those Roaches are going to be chased away without really, well, much to say at all. So another couple of Zerglings going down. And these roaches of Bly just going to continue popping on our way up to the top side here. That's game being called a single G. Can we get some warty Gs in the chat, guys? As that is a tap out. Nurture taking game one. A little bit unsure. I was like, ah, you know, I wasn't quite feeling it. I wasn't quite in the mood. I was like, I came in. I was like, ah, I kind of just want to play a couple of games and maybe take a chill day. Maybe stream some variety stuff. And I was like, you know what? No. Let's at least cast for a couple of hours and see how it goes. And you guys have brightened up my day and made me be full on in the mood to cast, 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 and cast some more. So, with that said, let's keep all these games rolling. As we have to the bottom right-hand side, the blue Zerg player. This is Bly from Team Expert. Down a game in the best of three. And to the top left-hand side, our red Zerg player 
from Red Bull. It's Nicho. Okay then, kicking this off into game number two and looking to see how things will go as we see a hatchery on the natural expansion already dropping down and getting set to continue. So, hatchery first from both players gives us a couple of moments to meme with the chat. So what's up chat? How is everyone feeling on this wonderful Monday evening? Is everyone having a good day? Did everyone's week get off to a good start? Did anyone have anything exciting happen today? I want to hear it. What happened today, guys? Did you guys play some Protoss on the ladder? Did you guys see something funny while going to work? I want to hear your stories of the day. You know, we've got so many people in here. Someone must have had something kind of interesting happen to them today. I took a four-hour nap, says Jacob Book. That, I don't... I don't know if that classifies as interesting. I had a bagel for breakfast. That's interesting. You know, that, you know, not everyone has bagels for breakfast, so there you go. Black Moon had a bagel for breakfast, guys. Interesting Monday facts. I made wild garlic pesto with wild garlic from the local forest I collected. That's interesting from Bouncing Cow. I was looking for rats in a filthy apartment. Vlar 2 had a wild day. Rat hunting. Red fishing in the pouring rain, says Tino. Prodos, says Schnurson. Yeah, Prodos. Prodos. He just Prodos. That was his day. Just Prodos straight up. Crazy. Akbar 1983 on the his first ever paid vacation. See, you guys had some really exciting days. I slept all day, came into stream, and here I am. So I'm glad I'm living the world for you guys a little bit because, uh, <laughs> you know, now now that I've shared these experiences with you guys, it feels as though I had a bagel for breakfast. It feels as though I went rat hunting and fishing and all these other cool things. Where in reality, I just also, <laughs> I, I took a bit of a nap, I guess, in Jacob Bogue style of uh, Monday planning. Anyways. Fun little way to fill up a couple of months. God, I love it when we get to cast with no delay. It's so awesome. I get to ask you guys so many questions and respond to them in real time rather than like asking them at the start of the game and then by the time you guys respond, be like, oh, cool, you guys are replying to me. But now I actually have to talk about the game. God damn it. All right. We do see the uh, Link Speed and a Bane Nest on the way up here in Nurchio. Both players went up to three bases, but Bly bypassed the Link Speed, which is definitely something you can do on Backwater because with this setup, you can wall Rotor and Evo. You can get the defensive setup to play the free base without link speed. So Bly going to take a little bit of a risk. And as Nurture goes into link speed and a Balin Nest, I wonder how much of an opportunity he'll really get to use those upgrades and those structure you know, and that structure. Because if Bly just goes straight into Roaches, Nurture plays too much into the Link Bane. Well, Nurture could definitely just find himself falling behind. I mean, he's already seven workers behind. Just from these little bits and pieces, and you're building a Balin Nest, continue to mine gas rather than just pumping out workers because you're mining only minerals. Gonna be seeing the Rotron and a couple of Eva Chimbers dropping down here. A few more drones on the way up and a plus one missile attack upgrade on this natural evolution chamber. Snurchio, so, I mean, he's kind of responding to the fact that he knows what's up. He sees the wall off, he sees what's going on. So he's like, okay, well, my own Evo's up. I actually end up getting the faster plus one attack. I'm just a little bit worried that, you know, we see here right now that. You know, the drone count is a little bit higher from Bly and has been for a while. For two or three minutes, he's been holding this little bit of an economic advantage. So, Bly holding the lead for the moment, as we do see plus some missiles, is way ahead for Nurture. Like, 40 seconds, that's a huge time in window. Fortunately for Bly, it'll be interesting to... Uh be interested to see kind of whether he can make up those 40 seconds because he's got quite some time because Nurture won't attack without Roach Speed. And considering the Lair is going to be another 20 seconds, then Roach Speed starts, plus one's over halfway done, it doesn't line up. So by the time Nurture has Roach Speed and the confidence to then attack across the map, then all of a sudden his plus one advantage isn't there. So Nurture will probably more be looking towards hitting with plus two, if anything. Bly's Lair about to finish up here, and we'll look to see what his choice is going to be. Again, a little bit of a greedy build in general gave him that eco advantage, and little things are starting to show through. For example, he gets plus one carapace, while Nurture's only gone for one upgrade initially. So, little bits and pieces here so far. As he gets set up and going. You woke up with a brutal commander game? That's interesting. You mean no one plays co op? Co op, you know, co op is actually the most played mode of StarCraft 2. Isn't that crazy? 50, I think it's 52% of monthly StarCraft users play co-op. That's insane. Or well, 52% of monthly games in StarCraft 2 are co-op. 
it's insane. Like, Co-op has such a huge fan base, but obviously it doesn't quite transfer into... Um, it doesn't uh, quite transfer into kind of like streaming as much, I guess, because people don't watch Co-op as so much. I think it makes sense, right? Like, people are more likely to play a more casual mode. It's, it's interesting. Obviously, it's not for everyone, but it's uh, very popular. I wonder when they release a new Co-op Commander. It's been a while, hasn't it? I guess we had Han and Horner just after BlizzCon. I guess it's five months, four or five months. It feels as though they release releasing Co-op Commanders more regularly than that, though. It feels like the hacker then Han and Horner came out very quickly, but maybe that was just me. Anyways, we all just setting up here with this Overseer scouting around. A Lurker then already on the way up from Nurture, so he's already just building up into the next stage of this game. Bly built a lot of roaches, but he's also starting plus two, plus two, so it's not as though he's looking to win the game just with this attack, but I do have to say that he has got quite an army supply lead. 84 army supply to 64. Just for, again, little leads early, and, you know, also the fact that he probably didn't build a Hydra Den on a Lurker Den just now. That's not going to come into play at all. And, oh my god, I mean, obviously Nurture also started plus two. He's also investing into a plus one Carapace upgrade Nurture that's not coming through right now, and Bly, pushing at the front, has suddenly had so much damage. I mean, look at this. He's going to be able to pick away at so many of these units. He's getting so much damage done. These Roach is going to keep on pushing forwards, and Bly having a great time. And, I mean, just one of those sheer things of, you know, a little bit of a gamble at the start, a little bit of a greedy play has given him a slight edge, which he just pushed as much as he could. And he hits this timing attack where Nurture just wasn't quite ready, building into a Lurkadin and all the rest of it. As they are going to be seeing these roaches continue to fight off. Nature might be able to hold this off, but even if he does, he's lost so many drones in an attempt to hold it off and actually fly. Reinforcements are coming across the map, so even now it's actually looking more difficult for Nurture to defend this. And it looks as though Bly is going to even this up. 1-1. One, one. There it is. Bly ties this up. One game at PC in this best of three. And we're going to allow me to keep on producing these events, producing tournaments, casting for you guys on what we try to make a regular daily basis. To the bottom right hand side, our blue Zerg player opening with a 12 pool is Bly. And to the upper left hand side, the red Zerg player is Nurtio. Alrighty guys. How does this work? Getting 100 and giving 500, $5 to the streamer. Uh, you need to be a Twitch Prime user, Sigma Tech. If you're a Twitch Prime user, you can buy 100 bits for, or 500 bits for $1. Which is usually costs you a bit more than five dollars, actually. So, you do need Twitch Prime for it, however. Yes, he cancels a worker quite often when you go twelve pool. You start the first worker just out of habit, or you just do it maybe as you make up your mind, and then you cancel it to start the twelve pool. It doesn't really change anything, actually, uh, because obviously you don't actually need the lava. You still have free lava available for when the pool finishes. So. It's completely normal. Happens actually quite a lot with 12 pool openers. Pool first from Nurture though, and that will help a lot in this defense in the next few moments. So waiting for these links to come across the map. But Nurture in a good spot. The one negative is his hatchery will be low on health. So while Nurture will have links out faster than usual, he won't have as much health on the hatchery to tank for a while. So we'll see how this works out over the next couple of moments. Spyro the Dragoon coming in with the Chia 100. Thank you so much for the Chia 100, mate. Got some love in the chat for Spyro. Thank you for the bits. We've gone a bit crazy today, guys. Even people without Twitch Prime spamming some bits our way. It's been awesome. Thank you for all the bits, guys. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. All right. Well, we do see these Lings of Bly coming up towards the upper left-hand side as we see Nurgio jumping into this fight and a little bit of back and forth so far as uh, that fight so far from Nurgio is fantastic. Who cares if your hatchery has less health if you just clean up all of the Zerglings so quickly? As you are going to see. Ooh, well, now it will start going Bly's favor because the health feelings will win out. But now Nurture gets a queen. He can bring this forwards into the fight. And you'll be able to just keep on spamming another couple of lings with a drone here or there. And of course, he does hold a bit of an advantage. Now Bly, interestingly enough, off the 12 pool will take a hatchery. Because 12 pool without gas, you can afford a hatchery off of because you're only mining minerals. So Bly will have a hatch up. That's not his disadvantage. His disadvantage is a later queen. And he'll also have a lower drone count. So while Nurture's ahead, it's not like a massive 100% victory kind of ahead. It's a... You know, he's got a bit of extra income, which should go a long way in helping him out moving forwards here, but can definitely go wrong if you're not cautious. So, just have to still play out correctly, scout properly. It's a nice catch on a couple of those lings. Just cleans them up without ling speed of his own for a while here. Obviously, Nurture will be unable to clean up those lings effectively. So that's uh, nicely done, as we do see ling speed coming on up here from Nurture. That is one of the advantages Nurture will also have. He was mining gas with the extra couple of workers, so he's been able to get in towards link speed 
And that'll go a long, long way for him now. Moving forwards with these queens, I think just hunting for an overlord here. Overlord actually heads off to the left-hand side. As we are going to be seeing a few of these links continue down towards the bottom right-hand side to see uh, what happens next. Thank you so much, Jacob Boga, the chat, with the Cheer 100 as well, saying thanks again for hosting all these games, Wardy. Daily Watcher. I'm glad that you watch Daily, man. It's always awesome to hear when people just tune in every time we're online or every time that they can, or as much as they can. It's really awesome. We uh, do try and cast every day on the channel, guys, as much as possible. If I'm not casting on the channel, it's usually because either there's other events going on, or I'm casting other events elsewhere, is uh, usually the case, so... Um, for example, Saturday, WCS was on, so it was a very busy day, I didn't get to cast, but I did actually stream some variety stuff. We try and go live once a day, so... If you like this content, then make sure you hit the follow, because again, there's just so much more of it coming out, and following is obviously the best way to keep track of it all going on. Feelings moving out, and uh, we are going to be seeing a third hatchery of Nurture coming down to the top side. Plus one missile attack here from Nurture with startup as well. You can just see all the advantages Nurture has. Slightly faster Evo Chamber means a faster plus one. Slightly faster Roach Roll means slightly faster Roach Production. Third Hatchery comes down sooner. The one thing he's behind on is the Lair. But I'm not even sure how much the Lair will have to kind of come into play here as we're going to be seeing these links. are actually going to be able to get a couple of drone kills. That's actually going to be really nice. Does he get this next one as well? Probably could have he target fired right away. A lot more Lings waiting to dive on him, but even just killing another couple of drones is just that little bit of extra something. A few Lings on the map, using that Ling speed he invested into earlier, and just using that to slow down Bly wherever possible, and he'll actually dive by. That's a drone, and that drone was trying to become a third hatchery, so that slows that kind of plan down as well. This is now five workers killed in the last few moments, and this is obviously becoming a lot more severe than just one or two drones that were originally dropping on down. As we just see him jumping in towards the main base, and it's going to be even more workers being picked off. He has this couple of drones he's got low initially on the gas, they drop as well. Eight workers killed here just from a few Zerglings. And this has worked absolute wonders for Nurture so far. The screen is going to continue to work their way through. A couple more of the Lings are down the low ground here. The drones can maybe pull on in to fight against this one more time as well. That last Zergling will go down on the right hand side. And we are just going to be seeing. Well, Nurture honestly at this stage is still very far ahead. Having killed those workers, he's already been making some roaches and he can get ready to maybe even start attacking across the map now. Abiogenesis is small enough where I think you can justify roach attacks without roach speed. So if this was another map, maybe Nature would wait for plus two in roach speed. But as it stands, his advantage is large enough he can definitely come forward. So he starts to target down the roach roaring. And as he starts to target down the road run, obviously that's a massive issue for Bly if he loses this. Queens have transfuser energy, but the thing is, even if they just sit here and transfuse the road run, he doesn't have any roaches that are in range to actually push these roaches back, so he'd just be sitting here transfusing forever. And Bly now can't make any more roaches until the next road run is done. Does he lose the Evo Chamber as well? Nurcio backs away, so maybe this plus one actually finishes. It's going to be so close, Nurcio! Three seconds away! No, one more hit! He gets it! A second or so to go! Evolution Chamber and plus one denied. Now Nurture is going to be in a stellar position. He can click on a roach to see that the upgrades are 0-0 zero, zero and haven't killed the Evo. He will know that that's going to stay 0-0 zero, zero for quite some time now. Nurture just confirming himself into an even further, of, uh, even further of a lead now. As we are going to see those roaches gathering up. Going to come through the center. Head down towards the bottom right hand side. And uh, get on cleaning up some of these... Uh, well, just getting cleaned up in general in the game. I mean... Nurture doesn't really have much to wait for. He even has road speed now, so he can come in, kill the third base, force Bly to respond. A small Ling counter attack, not even with Ling speed coming across. That's when you know Bly's a little bit desperate. Nurture ignores the third base, which is fine. I mean, just break down the wall again, keep up the pressure. No need to kill the third if it's not even mined, and you're confident enough that the game will just end with a larger attack. And right now, pushing forwards, I mean, even just killing the Evo Chambers, it's money that's wasted. He targets down the Queens before transfusers can come down properly. The last couple of Queens will at least get a transfuser two off. The drones have to pull in to defend. The slow link counterattack did absolutely nothing. Cleaned up by reinforcements. And as drones continue to drop, Bly will just not have enough here to stay in this any longer. And as we see this uh, set of roaches from Nurture continue to fight this out. He'll just continue to clean on up. And this is pretty much going to be game. Even if Bly eventually cleans up these last few roaches, reinforcements are going to be way too plentiful from Nurture for Bly to actually fight against. He just lost 14 drones. He's less than half the work account of Nurture now. The choice to go 12 pool here was heavily shut down, heavily picked away at, and that is really going to hurt. Bly doesn't even stay in the game, he just taps out. Nurture takes game number three, 2-1. to 